The ability to effectively operate in a nighttime environment is a fundamental task of every infantryman. With the mass availability of night vision and thermal optics on the civilian market, even the smallest of hostile nations and terrorist organizations can afford to outfit their guys to some extent with these capabilities. We must train to fight against a peer and a near peer threat. In this episode of Infantryman's Guide, we're going to be focusing on just that fighting at night. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment. The average night is close to 12 hours in duration. Thus, half the given day consists of periods of low light. If you cannot effectively operate at night, you are at a severe disadvantage to a trained enemy, especially one that is a peer or near peer threat. In this video, we will discuss the basics of night fighting, from basic night operating field craft to typical night vision optics and devices. To start, let's focus on basic field craft during the night. Sounds travel much further at night than they do during the day. Thus, caution and more emphasis must be placed on mitigating noise. Before stepping off on any operation, conduct proper PCCs and PCIs to ensure all gear is policed up and will not cause any excess noise during movement. Secure excess loose straps with tape or fasteners on the packs that are carried and the gear that's being worn. Tape up any metal on metal contact points on your gear such as equipment hooks or older parade sling swivels and keepers if you're using one. Canteen should be topped off. Half full canteens swish around during movement. If you wear a camelback, you can use your canteens to fill your camelback. When you suck out of the hose of a camelback, you're pulling the air out as well, and it's cutting down on the noise made by the water inside. Camouflage is still an important factor in night operations. Most military camouflage patterns that are effective in a given environment during the day against regular vision are still effective at night when viewed through night vision devices. All the principles of camouflage that are applicable during the day are just as important at night. As you can see here, the moon is behind these individuals casting a shadow on their front side. This is making them appear much darker and contrasting them with their background, thus making them easier to detect both with and without the use of night vision. Here you see the moon is in front of these individuals, thus casting a shadow behind them and not highlighting them to the enemy. Keep this in mind when you're planning a route towards an enemy occupied area. Additionally, most modern military uniforms are NIR compliant, which also helps reduce their signature when viewed through night vision. Be sure not to wash your utilities with detergents that contain UV brighteners. This has the potential of brightening the material in your uniforms, making them easier to detect through MVGs. During the nighttime, it is easy for guys to forget or overlook camouflage of the face and hands. Natural skin oils on your face and hands will shine when exposed to moonlight or the illumination of a flare. To help mitigate this, apply camouflage face paint to your face and hands or use gloves. Light discipline is just as important as noise discipline. Every infantryman should have on his person a red lens capable flashlight. White light activation at night projects a large glare that can be seen from great distances away. With that said, try to limit all light activation while in the field. Red lens only minimizes the glare of the light and still be seen by the enemy. If you must use the light for anything, such as looking at a map or checking your GPS, use your poncho to cover yourself up in order to help minimize the chances of an enemy observing the light or glare from the light. Another aspect of light discipline that is often overlooked is that of IR being used and observed through MVGs. We can no longer assume that the enemy does not have MVG capabilities, and certainly all near-peer threats will indeed have them. Running an IR flood or beam is no different to somebody that's looking through MVGs than it is to someone turning on a white light flashlight to someone without MVGs on. Often guys get careless and complacent when they enter into an area with low ambient light. IR floods and beams should only be used when absolutely necessary. Here you see a whole squad that is compromised by one knucklehead leaving his IR on during their patrol. Additionally, keep in mind that some things like watches and GPSs that might only put out a very low amount of light when looked at with normal eyesight will be intensified through MVGs. To mitigate this threat, ensure that your watch is covered by your gloves or you can even wear a watch band specifically designed to cover the watch. 
Movement at night can be challenging, even with the addition of night vision due to the reduction in visibility on where you're stepping and the difference in depth perception when looking through MVGs. To help reduce noise at night, it may be necessary to select more open routes to move through. Regardless, there will always be times where crossing difficult terrain arises. Just remember, when planning for night operations, everything takes twice as long at night. If moving through more dense areas at night with the reduced visibility, it may be necessary to close the dispersion in the formations between troops to around 5 meters. When presented with no other feasible option, and movement must be made through a very dark and or dense vegetation, a train type method can be employed to help move troops through it. This is done by each patrol member placing their hand on the team member in front of them. The lead man will then guide the rest of the team in a very slow, methodical way through the dense area until the team has made it to a point where they can reestablish normal dispersion. Note that a patrol is very vulnerable during this type of movement, and this should only be utilized when there's no other feasible option. Friendly identification at night is another aspect of night operations that can be challenging. Here are some methods that can be used to help identify friendly troops at night. The use of cat eyes, which are small luminous and tape squares sewn on the back of helmet bands and other headgear, can be seen with or without the use of night vision on the backside of friendly troops. IR patches and glint tape can also be used to establish friendly forces if there is a prescribed manner in which the items are to be worn on the uniform. IR chem lights are useful tools that cannot be seen by the naked eye only through MBGs. It can be used to mark certain elements such as key leaders or elements in the attack. IR beacons or strobes can also be used for marking and identification purposes. Lastly, the use of built-in IR on an individual night vision unit such as PVS-14 gives an individual infantryman the ability to perform what is known as IR flashes. These IR flashes can be used in the form of a challenge of password. For example, if the combo was 3-2-1, Challenger would flash his IR three consecutive times, which would be met with two flashes in return. The challenger would then return one flash to inform the other party that they have received the correct response and that it was now safe for the challenged party to enter friendly lines. Now let's begin talking about how we see and engage targets at night. First, let's talk about our natural vision. To help prepare our natural vision for night, remain in the dark for at least 30 minutes. Try to rest and limit prolonged exposure to bright light in order to keep your natural night vision intact. Flares are an excellent signaling device both in the day and in the night and are good methods of signaling adjacent units during the conduct of an operation. At night, flares can also be used to illuminate a given area but are extremely limited in the duration of illumination they can provide. Additionally, flares can also have adverse effects if deployed in the wrong area, causing friendly forces to be illuminated for the enemy. Next, let's talk about night vision. There are numerous different night vision systems in the world used by individual infantrymen from all different types of countries of origin. These systems are typically weapon mounted or worn on the user's head. Night vision devices work by amplifying the existent ambient light in the environment. So in short, the brighter the moon is, the better you're going to see through these devices. Night vision systems generally fall into three different generations. Generation 1 systems are older models that rely heavily on large amounts of ambient light or the addition of IR light. Civilian-made Gen 1 optics can be had for relatively cheap, and although they are not nearly as effective as newer generation optics, they can still easily detect IR light from an opposing force that is not employing IR light discipline. Older Gen 1 military surplus night vision may be still being used by hostile nation reserve forces or other terrorist organizations. These systems tend to be very large and bulky units, but they can still bring a tactical value to the enemy. Generation 2 night vision systems provide significantly better performance than Gen 1 optics, but are still not as capable as the Gen 3 systems that are employed by most modern militaries. Typically, the most common Generation 3 night vision devices for standard infantry are dedicated weapon mounted optics or a single or dual tube system. With newer night vision devices, you typically encounter two different types of color palettes, which is the traditional green-based vision that has been in use for decades with night vision devices, and the newer white phosphor models that many tend to say that they prefer over the old legacy green-based models. The AN PVS-14 has been one of the biggest workhorses for the U.S. military for over the last two decades. The PVS-14 is a single tube monocular. The optic can be mounted to a weapon, typically in conjunction with a day optic such as a red dot sight or an ACOG. 
but is most often mounted to the user's head through either a head harness or by means of a helmet mount. Dual tube systems typically offer an infantryman more depth perception and are generally speaking easier to use. They are also substantially heavier. A single tube such as a PVS-14 will leave one eye exposed enabling a user to still be able to use their normal vision and utilize their day optic if need be. Such a setup is better for an urban environment where there is additional lighting coming from buildings and street lights. There are a few different ways to engage targets at night with night vision. Obviously there are dedicated weapon mounted optics with reticles as well as attaching an optic like a PVS-14 directly to the weapon if the weapon has an optic that will work in conjunction with it. Some optics are set up and have night vision settings on them that will allow you to look through them while wearing a head mounted device and will not give you an overpowered blurred reticle. This method of engagement is not the quickest, but like the weapon mounted optics, it will not alert the enemy that you are glassing them. One of the most common methods of engaging targets at night is with the use of an IR laser. This engagement method allows an individual infantryman to fire his weapon from any position while not having to conform his head to get behind any type of optic while wearing their night vision. This is arguably the quickest and easiest method of engaging targets, especially in a fast paced situation such as in the attack where fire and maneuver are taking place, or in CQB. The downside to using an IR laser is that it can reveal a shooter's position to an enemy who may be observing through MBGs. Infantrymen must be trained in IR discipline, much like the use of a safety selector switch on a rifle. The IR comes on to engage a target and it immediately is turned off following completion of the fired rounds. In addition to IR laser devices, there are also IR illuminators many of which are built into IR laser devices themselves. IR illuminators act much like a weapon mounted flashlight, but for MVGs. It can illuminate a given area, making that area more visible through your night vision. Again, IR discipline must be stressed with these. If the enemy has any night vision capability, they can see this light too. The next most common form of night vision is the thermal optic. Thermals are generally weapon mounted or handheld devices for observation. Thermals are amazing pieces of gear that detect heat in an environment, thus making warmer objects, such as human beings, stand out amongst their background. Both handheld and weapon-mounted thermal optics can be great for both offense and defense. They are very useful for listening and observation posts, as well as scanning an area for possible enemy threats before moving into them. Thermal optics are great for detection, however they are not necessarily the best for achieving positive ID whether or not you're looking at a friendly or enemy. Thermal technology and optics are not unique to just military use. There are civilian thermal optics that are widely available on the commercial market. Thus, infantrymen must train to minimize and counter these threats. For starters, thermals do not generally see through thick vegetation. Ensure fighting positions and unit locations such as patrol bases are in dense cover and concealment to help minimize their thermal signature. Here you can clearly see two vehicles with personnel. What you don't see is a squad plus size element that's actually bivouacked in the thick vegetation just behind these trucks. When selecting routes, terrain should be considered that can help obscure the use of thermals by the enemy. By selecting routes that put thick vegetation between you and the enemy, and the use of micro terrain, you can help mask your unit's movement from observation. Additionally, in regards to the thermal threat, Clothing is already being issued to specialized units to help minimize thermal signatures. I could see a time in the very near future where these types of uniforms are standard issue. In regards to both night vision devices and thermal optics, consideration should be given when using these devices due to the light put off from the devices themselves around the eye when in use. Most optics have eye cups that help form around the eye to prevent the light from escaping. However, it is common for guys to remove these eye cups or not wear them properly thus creating an ability for the light to escape, which should give the individual infantryman's position away. This should be checked during the PCCs and PCIs. In addition to this, eye protection should be worn at night in conjunction with night vision devices, specifically when on the move. Often you can't see the branches and twigs at night. The last thing you want to deal with during a course of an operation or a mission is one of your men going down with a stick lodged in their eye. Lastly, ensure that your equipment is dummy corded and properly secured to your person and or weapon. Movement at night can be challenging and gear has a tendency to fall out or off at night unbeknown to the user. 
sensitive items should be secured in some fashion to ensure that it is retained in the event that it falls off, so it is not lost, or even worse, falls into the hands of the enemy. Before I end this video, I want to send a special thanks to AGM for helping make this video possible by providing these optics for use in this video. We'll have another review video of these systems coming out very shortly. Finally, whether you're current or former military, law enforcement, or civilian, I highly encourage you to check out the Night Fighter courses hosted by SNS Training Solutions. They host courses Contact. in both live fire as well as force on force courses utilizing the same type of miles laser engagement training system that the U.S. military utilizes. I'll have information in the information box below as well as the pinned comment in the comment section for future course dates. Well, that concludes this episode of Infantryman's Guide over night fighting. If you're liking what you're seeing, don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe. I've heard of several videos over infantry-related topics and I plan to do several more in the future. Thanks for watching and don't forget to leave a comment.